dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Good evening, I'm Justin Case. Heavy rain continues to fall across a big chunk of the region, potentially causing some high water concerns. Brandon Robinson continues to track the storms. He joins us now from the Weather Center with the latest. Brandon. Justin, an active day turned out to be with those showers and storms literally just firing up as pop-ups and spreading out across the region. Let's take a look and see what's going on as we track those on live pinpoint Doppler radar. We're looking at a couple of new cells that we're going to take a look at here as we get closer, but that main one we're tracking is that flash flood warning until 815 for parts of Clay County and Knox County. Now again, it looks like the rain is lit up there for now, but more is kind of start, uh, filtering through that way, so we're going to continue to watch that. We are tracking a new cells or some new cells down near Middlesboro and near the border there with Kentucky and Tennessee. No warnings yet, but they did put a weather service statement on there that there could be some stronger thunderstorms. Of course, we're seeing lots of lightning near Middlesboro, near uh, the uh, Saxton area there in Whitley County and back over toward Jellicoe over also into Pine Knot. We're taking a look at some of these rainfall rates. Again, this is what we've been watching is the heavier bands of rain. Let me get on here. One of those uh, purple areas right there just to the southeast of Williamsburg. That could be potentially four inches of rain per hour. We go on over to to our next cell. This is up into Breathitt County there, or actually moving into parts of Lee and Owsley counties now out of Breathitt County. And again, same thing right above Cow Creek there, potential to close to four inches of rain per hour. And then down into parts of southwest Virginia over toward Appalachia, Norton, Keokie, Coburn, those areas over in Lee and Wise counties. You see the purple area right there just to the west of Norton, the potential for close to four inches of rain per hour. If these cells do not start to move, they're going to cause some serious issues for our neighbors across the region. So we're going to keep a very close eye on that. As we take a look at the WIMT weather app forecast, you can download that. And again, a very uh, easy way to uh, track that rain there. And we'll continue to watch Watch that for you as we head through the rest of the evening. Justin. Brandon, thank you. Tonight, friends and family of Gabby McCoy have gathered at Phelps High School to remember the teen. We first told you about her yesterday. Gabby died Wednesday night in an accidental shooting at her home. Right now, there is a balloon release being held at the school. Grief counselors are also there for anyone who needs to talk about the loss. Earlier today, we heard from one of her best friends. He says it's just hard to comprehend what she meant to everyone there. Everybody in the community, they, they're going to miss Gabby. Like, she was just, she's just a big part of the girls' basketball team. She just, she just had an impact on everybody. If you met her, you remembered her smile, you remembered her laugh, you just remembered everything about her. Counseling will be available at the school tomorrow morning starting at 10. McCoy also played basketball for the Lady Hornets. You will hear from her coach and her teammate tonight at 11. And McCoy would have entered her senior year this August at Phelps. Moments ago, we learned chamber funeral services will handle her arrangements. Right now, those are incomplete. She was only 16 years old. Tonight, a Rockcastle County inmate is on the run. Police say Joseph Morris took off earlier today while on work release. Here, take a closer look at him. Investigators tell us he was cutting grass when he ran off. Morris was last seen wearing brown khaki pants with an orange shirt. He is described as a white man with brown hair, stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, and weighs about 105 pounds. If you see him, call 606-878-6622. A man indicted in a Knox County human trafficking case pleaded not guilty today. Investigators arrested Carl Hickman along with Michael Nason and Tiffany Cheek earlier this year. This is video of Hickman in court yesterday. They found the trio and a teen in a U-Haul in Cincinnati. Hickman faces a charge of unlawful transaction with a minor. Police think Michael Nason raped the girl while she was locked in the truck. He's facing two counts of rape. Hickman is due back in court on July 26th. Governor Matt Bevan and Congressman Hal Rogers made a big announcement today in Lexington. The first phase of the Kentucky Wired project is complete. WYMT's Macy Marie was in Lexington and talked to the governor about what this means for Eastern Kentucky. A long awaited project is underway to Eastern Kentucky. It won't cover every part of the East, but we're going to literally by the end of this year, we're going to see a fair bit of it lit up. On Friday, Governor Matt Bevin and Congressman Hal Rogers announced the first portion of the broadband network is finished. That this digital interstate is one giant step closer to coming directly to your county seats. Governor Bevin says the network will be in eastern Kentucky within a few months. Our primary focus right now is to get it to the areas that we know that will give us the best shot to recruit industry. 
The project will expand in phases, or as the governor calls it, rings of access areas. People who are already in that community uh, want to be uh, able to have access to these uh, rings and to the next rings that are coming. Helping those in the community while hoping to attract new industry. There are people who are not yet in those communities that have expressed an interest in potentially being there as well. The entire project is expected to be completed in 2020. In Lexington, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. The project experienced several delays, including squirrels that chewed through some of the wiring a few weeks ago. It is more than $100 million over budget. State Auditor Mike Harmon says the project will cost Kentucky taxpayers $1.5 billion over the next 30 years. Meanwhile, police still need your help finding a man, finding this man. His name is Nicholas Rucker. More than one month ago, state troopers say he killed his girlfriend, Vicki Connor, in the Woodbine community. Connor's family is offering a reward for any information leading to Rucker's arrest. The reward is $10,000. Today we learned when a McCreary County man charged with murder will appear in court. State police say Preston's Cl Preston Clark shot and killed his girlfriend's mother, Larissa Cox, Wednesday night. Friends say Clark and his girlfriend just had celebrated the arrival of a baby. Clark is due in court on July 3rd. We are months away from the November election, but the race for governor is already heating up. Governor Bevan and Andy Bashir are no strangers to each other. They faced off several times in the courtroom. Now they're battling on the campaign trail. Nick Oliver explains some of the issues expected to take center stage. Campaign 2019 has kicked off and it is loud. The governor, along with Attorney General Andy Bashir, are planting their feet for a busy political season. This governor hasn't been straight with the people of Kentucky. Which version of Andy Bashir are you talking to? The topics of debate are piling up and teachers are taking up one of the top spots. And I challenged our governor to order his labor cabinet secretary to stop trying to find teachers $1,000 a day simply by going to the Capitol and fighting for public education. I regret nothing that I have ever said about an educator, nothing. During a sit-down interview on WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers with our own Bill Bryant, Governor Matt Bevin says he's setting the record straight on the highly watched issue. Our labor cabinet and our labor secretary have a specific job to do. They're doing the job. What the end result of that job will be, we'll see when we get there. Bevin addressed the removal of Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton from the 2019 ticket. A removal he says has been in talks for two years and conversations Hampton knew were happening. For well over a year, it's been clear this is the direction we were going in, and she and I have had a lot of private uh, conversations about this. The governor also says he's in favor of a gas tax increase. According to the incumbent, this would solve miles and miles of Kentucky's crumbling roads. In Lexington, Nick Oliver, WYMT Mountain News. The governor and attorney general will meet again at Fancy Farm on August 3rd. Another big announcement today in Frankfurt, beginning with the 2020-2021 budget, 100% of coal severance funds will head to coal counties. WYMT's Katie Cook breaks down the impact here in the mountains. Justin, it is music to the ears of the judge executives and other county officials here in the mountains. Many say the extra money will help fund projects years in the making. The issue of where coal severance funds end up has been a topic of debate for years. We don't want the money to get wasted. Sadly, historically, there's been a lot of waste. You see a lot of office parks with, you know, roads with weeds and bridges that, you know, are connecting to nothing. Today, Governor Bevin is announcing, beginning with the 2020-2021 budget, all of that money will go back to coal-producing counties. In Harlan County, we used to receive five, six million dollars a year in coal severance, and this past year we received about a million and a half, if that puts it in perspective. For the past 20 years, 50% has went to the state's general fund. And that's the first time that we've, that we've seen uh, someone boldly say 100% uh, of the funds are going to come back to the coal counties. Leaving many eastern Kentucky county officials scrambling to find the money for important infrastructure projects. In years past, state lawmakers have introduced and pushed for similar bills to pass the Senate General Assembly. However, efforts have fallen short. Justin, it is also important to note this could potentially be a game changer for eastern Kentucky school districts struggling with funding. 
Katie, thank you very much for the report. Meanwhile, the coal industry in Kentucky calls the EPA's new policy for coal production a win for the state. The Trump administration just did away with the clean power policy. Coal officials say the new rule will allow states to regulate how they produce power and what their power mix is. At the same time, Kentucky has lost so many coal mining jobs and many plants are aging. Are we too far gone at this point? No. No, we are not too far gone. Like I said, 30% uh, of the mix, the, the nation's mix is coal, 75% of Kentucky's. It will be that way for a long time to come. Tonight at 11, Miranda Combs goes out on a tour of Big River's power plant to see some of the improvements and challenges facing Kentucky's coal industry. Get ready for some fun in the sun this weekend in Pike County. Finishing touches are being made at the East Kentucky Marina for the East Kentucky Waves and East Kentucky Landslide attractions tomorrow at Fish Trap Lake. Take a look. They put some inflatables out on the lake. The new attraction opens tomorrow at 10 in the morning. Hopefully we'll be able to get you out on the lake tomorrow, but tonight there's thunderstorms still moving through the area and some warnings and advisories out right now. I'll talk about the latest coming up in a couple of minutes. And just ahead, we'll tell you about Farm Camp, an educational program that teaches children about healthy eating habits, food prep, and cooking.